In this installment of the METOS videos, we're going to look at disease models for canola. There are biological factors of any disease. In this particular situation, we're really looking at the environmental conditions which propagates the fungal infection through weather conditions that are localized to the crop. You also need the host, of course, the crop and the pathogen. They need to be present at the same time in the region. The plant disease will result only if all these factors occur at the same time. So if you have a new disease that's emerging in your area and the inoculum levels for the pathogen are low, then a disease outbreak, of course, may not happen. So the disease triangle really tells the story. You have the pathogen, the host, the environment. The environment overwhelms or tips the scales in favor of the pathogen, which is then able to overcome the natural defenses of the particular crop and cause an infection or outbreak. So you need to know the local weather conditions, which this chart is saying. You need to know the temperature, relative humidity, things like leaf wetness, precipitation, soil temperature, so that you can actually look at the various components of a particular outbreak in terms of the, the fungus or the actual pathogen. So in this case, the apothecia, spore release, infections on the leaves, first infections and secondary infections are all driven by the local environmental conditions. The importance of localized weather cannot be underestimated at all. You can see significant changes in uh, disease models with a very short distance. And this highlights this. This is only one and a half kilometers from a station that's under a grass environment at the main office to one that's actually in the field of canola. We're looking at two completely different situations here in terms of the disease uh, propagation. And it shows the sensitivity of the model to the difference in microclimate. Here we have very long period for apothecia development and sporulation and a hydrolytic infection at the field, whereas by the office under grass we have a very short period uh, time frame for apothecia and sporulation and we never do get to 100% hydrolytic infection. So it shows the importance of having localized data to drive the model and it can't be 10 kilometers away from a particular field otherwise the model is just simply not valid. So you have to design this based on the distribution of your customers, the geography and placement in fields of where you should have stations. So when we look at the canola production in a field climate, we're really looking at three separate models, the sclerotinia stem rot, pollen, pollen beetle flight, and foma stem cancer. So it's the genetic traits that set the yield potential, but it's these diseases and pests that cause the reduction, of course, through the year, and we want to mitigate them. So there is a value proposition for the canola disease model, in particular sclerotinia. If you have field-specific weather stations, you can know the modeled conditions for the apothecia development, the spore release, and the spore infections, being hydrolytic and aposoria. You can then time your fungicide application to the right growth stage, so you need to know the synchrony of the crop to uh, the disease as well as the stage of development and track the disease risk pressure of course. What you're doing is preserving your yields and quality based on a well-timed fungicide application which means you have preserved yields and efficient management with the system. So in our canola production system we're looking at sclerotinia stem rot known as white mold. There's a number of different pieces that go in to make this model work. First, you need to have a rain event and a high period of relative humidity lasting more than 20 hours at an optimal temperature of 21 to 26 degrees. So we see here we have high leaf wetness, high humidity, a rainfall event, which starts the red solid line, the apothecia development, the mushroom development. Once it gets to about 95%, we switch then to the sporulation event. The spores are actually released. Uh, that can then uh, infect petals and so forth on the crop. That sporulation event goes over a period of time. At the same time though, the aposoria infection begins to take place and track over that period of time. 100% aposoria infection occurs a couple of days down the line from when the sporulation event actually occurred. So we recommend performing the chemical plant protection treatments in a period right after the sporulation reaches 100%. So you have a couple day window. Then you can have secondary infections like the hydrolytic, which are not shown on here, which are secondary infections after the uh, beginning of the aposoria infection. So when you look at the cost benefit of sclerotinia, uh, it's quite significant. Um, when you look at the damage that can occur in terms of the loss of yield and loss of profit on a particular 
farm. So the estimated percent of yield loss can be used to estimate the bushel loss due to sclerotinia infection if not treated using the following formulas. So if the value is lower than the cost of the fungicide projection application per acre, then a fungicide is not recommended. So a yield loss uh, is equal to per acre the potential yield loss, the estimated yield and the dollars per bushel. Uh, so if we have a cost of fungicide at $25 an acre, $11 bushel and a 40 acre crop, we can come out with a formula then for this. So right from the Canola Council of Canada, if you have a 50% st main stem infection, that's a 25% yield loss. So you pencil that into the equation, 25% on 40 bushels, $11 is $110 per acre uh, lost at a 25% yield loss. At a 10%, it's $44. So on 1,000 acres, if you look at this in terms of we're going to lose that, but we're going to put on uh, cost $25 for the product, we're still making $85 an acre. Even at 10%, we're making $19 an acre. So if your IoT uh, solution was $4,000 to monitor this, you can make, you know, on a thousand acres, a significant amount of money back uh, based on using your solution. So the ROI ends up being, you know, 3.7 to 20 to 1 return on investment for that IoT solution of $4,000. So the benefits are, you know, before you go, you save time and money uh, with uh, conditions because you verify the local uh, weather conditions at that field. You verify the model, uh, field model infection conditions. You verify the severity of the infection. You determine your spray timing uh, based on the date and hour uh, from your model. And you have a record of past infection levels and weather conditions uh, for that particular field. So thank you.